everyone and welcome to my first video to kick off the Animal Artist Collective. If you've jumped on board to our social media early on, you may already know about this new collective, but for those of you who are joining us for the first time or hearing this information for the first time, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about this collective and how it was founded. Jennifer, Charlie, and I have been working on this project pretty much nonstop over the past month ever since we visited each other early on in January for a local show. Jennifer and I actually met in person about a year ago at the Silicon Valley Comic Con, and although we still live about an hour apart from each other and don't see each other as often as we'd like, we did become fast friends and colleagues, I suppose, working the artist alleys in local conventions and, of course, here on YouTube together. We have both been really intrigued with the YouTube Artist Collective and we're big fans of their videos. I, for one, came across them when they did their Endangered Species theme nearly a year ago, actually. I closely followed the group, actually inquired about joining them when my channel was a little bit smaller and before I had met the requirements to join. And um, although I loved watching the artists in that group create their artwork and a form around the community, I realized that the themes that they often chose or that their communities chose weren't exactly suited for my type of painting. When Jennifer and I were talking last month, we realized that we actually had a lot of the same thoughts about the YouTube Artist Collective that we really like and admire, the community and the foundation that they've grown together, but that neither of our art styles really fit in there. And that is when she dropped the idea of forming an animal-based collective. I was hooked from the second the words left her mouth, and I was so relieved when she added that she wanted a partner in founding this group, since it would be a lot to take on by herself. So thus, the partnership was born and the two of us got to brainstorming immediately over the next hour that I was sitting there with her in her kitchen, and then I thought about it on my whole way home later that day. It took us a lot of time and work to really nail down the vision that we had for this collective, and ultimately, I am thrilled with what we have come up with and how well the community has been responding to this already. We did go ahead and announce the collective at the end of some of our videos last week to let you guys know about that, and we already have communities forming on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I'll tell you more about that towards the end of the video so that you can go ahead and join us there as well. But first, I wanna tell you more about the Animal Arts Collective and our vision for this group. The Animal Arts Collective was founded to promote awareness for animal welfare and conservation, but also to provide a platform for emerging artists and connect them better with their communities. As an intimate group of artists, we are striving to help support one another, uphold our collaborators' core values, and also engage with our audiences on social media through thoughtful and animal-centered artwork. However, we don't just want to support each other or create pretty artwork, we also want to commit ourselves to directly supporting animals and their habitats in the wild, which is why every piece created for AAC will be available for sale by each individual artist. At least 50% of the proceeds for each and every piece will be donated to a reputable conservation or welfare organization that has been chosen by the artist and based on that month's theme or specific animal that they've chosen, which I will get to in just a couple moments. Before I do, though, I want to go ahead and tell you a little bit about the other artists who are joining me in this effort and kicking off this collective together. As I mentioned, Jennifer Charlie is the other co-founder of this group. She specializes in whimsical illustrations, usually watercolors, that combine fauna and flora, and most notably succulents, which are her favorite plants. Also joining us for our first video are Eve Bolt and Anita Gadzinska. Am I saying that right, Anita? I hope I am. Most of you already know Eve, who is one of the other resident watercolor reviewers here on YouTube. And in this collective, she is combining her love for watercolors with her love for cats. And she has picked a really unique cat for this month's theme. Anita is an illustrator from the Netherlands and her work has a really dreamy, magical feel to it. And I hear that she has come up with a really, really cool layered piece for this month's theme, which I can't wait to see myself. All of their channels will be linked in the description of this video, so be sure to check out their videos after you wrap up with this one. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get to our theme. Throughout this year, the AAC is going to focus on each theme being centered around a different habitat or biome, and we're going ahead and kicking things off with one of everyone's favorites, tropical rainforests. There are so many animals that I would have been thrilled to paint for this topic, and I have to admit, part of me is a little bit sad that I didn't go with something more obscure or misunderstood because I love teaching 
people about new species. However, I have been wanting to paint this exact painting. I've had it in my mind for well over a year now. So in my art heart, I had to go with this sweet little jaguar. Before we go any further though, I wanna know what your favorite rainforest animal is. So of course, let me know in the comments below. So this painting is based off of a photograph that I took at the Sacramento Zoo many, many years ago. Despite not being the resident jaguar that I worked with more closely at my own local zoo, I have always been drawn to this specific photograph and there's just something about the look in her eyes that I fell in love with immediately and I knew that it had to be on my list of things to paint. For those of you who might be joining this channel for the first time and are a little confused what I mean by my local resident zoo jaguar is that before I became an artist and a YouTuber, I was a zoo educator. My total time spent working at zoos from volunteering to being on staff and even becoming an education manager was a total of 12 years and there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about my time that I spent there. Unfortunately, I did have to leave my career, the only thing that I had ever really been passionate about due to health reasons, but that passion for conservation has never left me. I, of course, am also super passionate about watercolors and art, and I share all of that with you here. And last year, I also tried to incorporate some of my zoo roots into an Endangered Species Paint With Me series. I really loved doing them, but the weekly format was both physically and mentally exhausting coming up with all this information to talk about and having to kind of hash through the emotions that went with that. But I have been looking for ways to reintroduce this aspect of my artwork and my background in life back into this channel. And now with this collective, I feel like I have the perfect opportunity to do so while also being supported by and supporting other artists who are doing the same. I do want to take a quick note if you are starting off the AAC experience on this channel, I do want to specify that the AAC is a collective to support our love for animals and that each artist can do so in whatever way they see fit. Due to my background, I suspect that a lot of my videos are often going to be more technical and conservation based, but that is in no way a requirement from the artists in this collective. As long as we're all spreading love and awareness for our animal and wildlife friends, we are fulfilling our goals as a collective. So let's take a moment before we jump into that conservation side of things and talk a little bit more about this piece. This is a predominantly watercolor based portrait with a little bit of white ink that we're going to be adding at the end for highlights and finishing touches. I am using Daniel Smith and Schmincke watercolor paints on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. I'm using a variety of brushes, including the Princeton Neptune for my base layers, which is a big soft faux squirrel brush. Later on, I'll be using a silver black velvet brush, a Princeton Heritage and an Escoda Perla for the little tiny details. If you want to know more about my favorite brushes, be sure to come back tomorrow for a video on my top 10 favorite watercolor brushes as part of the top five series. It got extended to 10 because of the uh, feedback that I got on Instagram and uh, all of my favorite supplies regardless can be found in my Amazon shop, which the link is supplied in the description of this video if you'd like to go ahead and take a look at that. As with all of my portraits, my favorite way to connect the viewer with the animals pictured are through their eyes, which I hope impacts the viewer to feel something in relation to the piece. I usually have a hard time naming pieces, and I suppose this piece wasn't really any different, but I did decide to go with Help Us, which relates to the jaguar's current conservation status. Jaguars used to be found as far north as the southwestern United States, but they are now rarely found in Mexico or north of Central America. They can survive in a variety of habitats, but they're most commonly associated with rainforests of Central and South America. They are a threatened species, with their numbers dropping primarily due to deforestation forestation, trophy hunting, and interactions with humans and agriculture. The organization CITES prohibits international trade of any of their body parts, and luckily, hunting is prohibited in many countries and restricted with others. However, there is still unprotected hunting allowed in places like Bolivia, Ecuador, and Guana at this time. As I mentioned at the top of this video, this and all the other pieces from the collective are available for sale by the artists and mine can be found in my Etsy shop. The organization that I have chosen to support with the proceeds for this piece is the Belize Audubon Society. The Belize Audubon Society was formed in 1969 and has been at the forefront of conservation by protecting natural resources while educating the public about their values and sustainable uses ever since. 
Among other initiatives, the Belize Audubon Society maintains the Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary, which was formed in the 1980s after being observed as having the highest density of jaguars ever on record. In addition to being renowned as the world's first ever jaguar preserve, the Coxcomb Basin is also of crucial importance in protecting an important watershed of rivers, as well as housing hundreds of species of both plants and animals within that ecosystem. This organization is such an important keystone for protecting rainforests throughout Central America that I would be honored to be able to donate the funds from the sale of this piece to help them further their efforts. If you're unable, however, to purchase this artwork but would still like to help support them, I will go ahead and of course link their organization in the video's description if you'd like to make a smaller donation. All right, team, so that was a lot of heavy hitting information about conservation. So how about we have some fun facts about jaguars thrown in here too? I'll jump right into my favorite fact about jaguars, and that is despite having this beautiful, gentle look I've portrayed in this particular painting, jaguars are not exactly to be taken lightly. Pound for pound, they have the strongest bite out of any feline and can carry prey twice their size directly up into a tree for safekeeping from other animals. Their tongues, like all cats, are covered in those little barbs, and just like a house cat, only much, much bigger, they help them to not only groom themselves, but also to strip the meat clear off of bones. When I worked at the zoo, we had this really cool prop that we used for teaching about the jaguar. We had this really big, it was probably over a foot in diameter, quote unquote, indestructible ball for large dogs that was made out of really, really thick, hard plastic. However, our ball was completely completely banged up, dented, chewed on, and roughed up on the outside. You could feel the incredible difference between the smooth uh, and untouched inside of the ball through the holes that were punctured into the ball, and you could compare that with the frayed rough texture like a not even like sandpaper, it was so rough and coarse on the outside with all these little frayed bits coming off everywhere. We would ask people what they thought all this frayed texture was from, and they would say scratching. And while there were scratch marks on the outside of the ball that you could see separately if you were looking for them, this frayed rough texture that was completely covering the outside of the ball was actually from our Jaguar simply licking it. And that can really show you the power of the tongues of these animals. It was really, really fun. So these facts about their mouths and their power are some of my favorite things about them, but there are also some neat facts about the way they look as well. The spots that they have on their back are actually called rosettes, which kind of look a little bit like roses. And despite initially maybe looking similar to leopards and people getting those two species confused, if you really look at comparison picture between the two, there are a lot of differences that you can see. Their patterns are different for starters. The leopards have much smaller, closer together spots, and jaguars on the whole are a lot more stocky and muscular than their distant cousins from Africa. People often throw around the word panther as a separate species of cats, but black panther is actually a general name for either a jaguar or a leopard that has this melanistic mutation that makes them appear completely black. However, if you look really closely, especially in the sunlight, you can still see their spots underneath. Well, folks, I have gone through my five, yes, five pages of notes for this video, and I think it's about time to wrap things up, but I did have a couple more quick things that I wanted to mention. The first is about a process, and that is that as we get to the end of this video, you'll see that I am finishing this piece with the white ink, as I mentioned uh, earlier in this video, using it for highlights in the eyes, on the nose, and for the hairs on the ears. I also used it for the whiskers, which I don't have a lot of footage showing it because my camera was nearly full, like completely full. This was, I think, four hours of footage in total out of a six hour painting, but I wanted to explain the process for the whiskers a little bit in case it's helpful for any of you. Whiskers can be really time consuming and hard to render properly. For this piece, I did use the masking fluid to keep track of where I wanted the whiskers, but I always had the intention of using ink on them afterwards. So after I pulled off the masking fluid, I went ahead and inked in those in white, but they're gonna look really stark and out of place if you don't treat them further than that. So then I carefully went in with a dark watercolor to create the shadows at the bases of the whiskers and then also on the undersides to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. 
So after that, the piece will officially be finished. And once again, it's available in my Etsy shop with 50% of the proceeds going to support the Belize Audubon Society to help protect wild jaguars, habitats, and other species that live alongside them. Of course, the other 50% goes to support me as an artist and as a YouTuber creating this content for you. Thank you guys all so, so much for joining us for our first Animal Artist Collective. We will typically release one video every other month, but to get things started off here, uh, and kick off the collective we will have another video again right away in march and we're going to be inviting some new artists to join us there as well due to some time constraints we are going to be picking the theme amongst ourselves for that next set of videos but we do have a goal of opening up our themes to our communities on facebook instagram and twitter in the future so if you'd like to be part of those communities if you'd like to help vote on themes for future episodes be sure to go ahead and check us out again the links for all of our social media are uh, in the description on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us at, at Animal Artist Collective and on Twitter, you can find us at Animal Artist Co. If you would like to show support for the collective and join along, you can do so by posting your own paintings inspired by each theme by tagging us on any of the social media accounts. And if you are a YouTube artist interested in officially joining the collective, you can do so by emailing us at animalartistcollective at gmail.com. And we would be happy to send you over the requirements for the group. Eventually we will put something up online that will just be public information for that. But as we're getting things sorted out, uh, the best way to get a hold of us is through our email address. So. Thank you again for all of your support. Let me know in the comments below if you're excited for future installments of this collective. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for your likes, comments, and subscribing if you'd like to see more content. And I will see you next time.